Many parents are ready to ditch the crib and get their kid in a toddler bed, but there are definitely some things that you need to know first. There are so many different tips that I can give you about transitioning your child to a toddler bed. Tip number one, before you even start making this transition, you need to start implementing a tot clock. If your child is using a tot clock before they transition to a toddler bed, they will already know what the colors on the clock mean. So if you're not familiar with a tot clock, check out this video right here where I talk all about the my tot clock after you watch this video. But what I love about the tot clock is that your child is not only learning their colors, but it's also reinforcing what each color means on their clock. So with the My Tot Clock brand, the blue is for bed and yellow is for wake up. So I always tell the kids blue is for bed and then yellow you get up with the sun. Only the sun on the clock, not the sun in the sky because sometimes the sun rises at 5 a.m. and that's not happening. Anyways, if you get your child used to the tot clock before you make this transition, your child is going to learn and understand that they need to stay in their bed. They're not just getting freedom of the whole house just because they're in a bed now. So now you have the tot clock all situated under control. Your child is adjusted to knowing what colors mean what. And now it is time to actually just kind of reevaluate the situation and make sure your child is actually ready. If they're not ready for this transition, it's gonna be a disaster. So here are some signs to know that your child is ready for this transition. If they're climbing out of their crib consistently, like more than just a one-time thing, and they do it a couple times and you've tried different tricks to get them to stay in the crib, then obviously from a safety standpoint, you need to make the transition to a toddler bed. So now we know that your child is actually physically and emotionally ready for the crib, make sure that it's the correct timing. You do not want to make this transition when you are having other transitions in your life. If you're having a new baby, I'm looking at all you parents who are like, I'm about to have a new baby, I need the crib, I need to get this toddler out of the crib. No, you don't, okay? No, you don't. If your child is not physically and mentally ready, then don't make this transition. But if you're having a new baby, it's not time to make the transition. If you're potty training, don't make the transition. If you're moving to a new house, it's not time. If your child is starting at a new school, it's not time. And another huge one is that if you are weaning from breastfeeding, it is not time to make this transition. Weaning from breastfeeding is very physical, emotional, mental, everything. It's just very busy in the brain, I guess you could say. Um, it's a very big transition. So trying to make that transition while transitioning into a toddler bed is just not gonna be a good combination. You're gonna end up with a lot of big emotions. So I would definitely hold off. Tip number three is to consider all of your options. I mean, do you have a crib where you can just take off the front rail of the crib and put up a toddler rail? Do you have a mattress that you're just gonna put on the floor Montessori style? Are you going to get a twin bed and put that up on a twin frame? Or are you gonna use a full size bed? There's so many different options. And of course, there's also like those race car beds or like a princess bed, um, anything like that. And I am gonna throw out the disclaimer here that those loft beds where like the bed's up top and then you may have like a dresser or a desk or like play area underneath, not the best time to do that right when you're making this transition. That can definitely be like something down the road. So that should not be an option at this point. Tip number four is to check out some examples of other big beds. I know it sounds silly, but I want you to point out beds when you're looking at books, when you're watching shows or movies, whatever it might be. But also checking out bigger beds in your own house, in family and friends' houses, and just kind of pointing out like this is a big bed, like grandma sleeps in a big bed and you're gonna sleep in a big bed soon too. And you can get in the bed and feel it and see that it's comfortable, just as comfortable as the crib. And just kind of like get the ideas in their head that eventually they're going to be sleeping in this big bed too. So now my next tip, tip number, what are we on, five, is that you wanna make sure that 
you're giving your child options. What bed sheets do they want to put on their new big bed? What uh, pillowcase do they want on their big new bed? What kind of comforter? What stuffed animals do they want to have on their bed? Show them how to make a bed. If you start teaching them at a young age to make their bed, then maybe they'll start making their bed every day, but I have yet to crack that code with my kids. It's fine. And in terms of like what stuffed animals they're going to put on their bed, they can definitely have a couple stuffed animals on their bed. I'm sure there will be nights where they want every single stuffed animal in the house on their bed, but if you can kind of start them off with two, maybe three stuffed animals on the bed, then we'll kind of just try and leave it at that. Tip number six is that you need to reevaluate your child proofing. This is a huge one, okay? You need to make sure that any furniture is bolted to the walls. You need to make sure you have baby gates at the stairs. You need to make sure that you have uh, door safety knobs on bathrooms, medicine cabinets. Like if you have a linen closet with medicine in there, make sure you have a door safety knob on there. You may need to have a knob on your child's bedroom door. You may need to put a baby gate up at your child's bedroom door. It definitely depends on your preference if you want to keep your child in their room or if you wanna just keep them out of other things. So, I mean, like what I'm talking about, the bathroom, you don't want them getting up in the night like playing in the water, in the toilet, because I've heard it happen. So just avoid that from the start. Some parents find it easier to kind of lock the kid in their room with either a gate or a door safety knob, um, or by closing off other things like the bathroom and medicine cabinets and those things. So those, I mean, your medicine cabinet obviously should already be locked off and not accessible to your child, but definitely check stairs, windows, locks on doors, all those things that you want to make sure that your child cannot access and that there will be no accidents or like any just like exploring around the whole house. This is another time to make sure that you have knob covers on your um, oven, your stove, on the fridge, on the pantry. If you have, you know, a child who wants to just get up in the night and feed themselves, you want to make sure that you have locks on those things as well. And like I already kind of mentioned, make sure that you have any furniture bolted to the walls specifically in your child's room and make sure that you have no cords to blinds or anything hanging down that may become a strangulation risk. Whichever tip number we're on now, make sure that you are keeping all the other furniture in the same place. So a lot of parents will want to change the entire bedroom around, but that might just be too much of a change for your child all at once. They'll probably wake up in the night and forget that they're in this big bed and they may be scared, nervous, um, uncomfortable, or they may be totally fine. Um, hopefully they'll be totally fine, but it wouldn't be uncommon for a child to wake up and be like, oh, oh, wait, where am I? So if you're moving the bed to a different place than where the crib was and you're moving different things around the room, they may wake up and totally freak out because they really have no idea where they are at all. So try and keep the crib or keep the bed in the same place that the crib was in and that will definitely make it easier for your child to adjust. And then once they've kind of been in the same place for a couple weeks in the bed and they're used to that, then maybe you can move some other things around and get fancy with it. The next tip is that you need to keep your bedtime routine the same way that it was before you made this transition. It's not broken, don't fix it, keep the same routine, keep everything exactly the same except the only thing that's different is the bed. You wanna make sure that you're doing all the same things in the same order that you usually do so that your child is seeing like, yes, this is a change, but everything else remains the same so there is nothing to stress about. The next tip that I have for you is to make sure that your child knows the rules of bedtime. So you can write them out, you can use my bedtime routine cards, link in the bio right here, they'll look like this. Um, if you don't have them, I highly recommend that you get them. Um, they are free, you could download them, print them, laminate them, hang them up at your child's eye level so they can point to what they're doing in their bedtime routine. But make sure that you are keeping your expectations very consistent. Make sure that you're keeping your expectations um, communicated with your child. You can make a list with your child saying, um, rule number one, get in bed and stay in bed. Rule number two, if you need anything, go to mom or dad or whoever the caregiver may be. Um, you don't want your child thinking that if they need something, they can just like get up and go get it because it might be, you know, a dangerous situation where they may fall down the stairs in the middle of the night because they're hungry and they want a snack. 
Um, so make sure that they know those rules and expectations that they don't touch doors They don't you know go outside and try and go play on the playground um, All those things and yes, I have heard of these things happening So that's why I make sure that I am telling you guys ahead of time You're probably thinking like well my kid would never do that But it's always the kid whose parent thinks well my kid's never gonna do that and they weren't prepared for something like that and then it ends up happening so just kind of keep it in mind and make sure you talk to your child about the rules and expectations of bedtime when they are in a big kid bed and with that make sure they know what the consequence is going to be if they disobey the rules and also what the reward is going to be when they do follow the rules which leads me to my next tip that you need to make sure that you have some sort of reward system, whether it is a morning parade uh, after a great night of bedtime, so you're having a big kid bed parade in the morning for a couple of weeks, or if you are having a sticker chart, or if you are having a prize bin or a special breakfast, whatever it may be, just make sure that you have some sort of reward system in place. And the last tip that I have for you today is to make sure that you are involving your child in this transition. You want, like obviously we already talked about making sure that they are involved in choosing their bedding and stuffed animals that are going on their bed, but make sure that they're actually there and that they are a part of the actual transition process. You want to make sure that they are there seeing you take apart the crib because then they're really connecting the dots that the crib is gone and now I have this bed and this is where I sleep. So have them help you and honestly like it's a really cute experience when you see a little toddler taking apart their crib and um, you know helping you put up a big kid bed. So that was a ton of information. Don't forget to download my bedtime routine cards in the description box down below if you don't have them yet. Um, I have had so many compliments about these routine cards. Not only are you getting my bedtime routine cards, but you're also getting my morning routine cards. And I have had kids ask for them, like request them, like, oh, I have nice bedtime routine cards. Can I have some for the morning? So definitely grab those, watch this video over here or this whole playlist, just go binge my whole channel for more baby and toddler sleep advice. Click this little button right here if you want to subscribe to my channel and keep blooming. Mwah.